So what the hell, did I just buy the worst AMD CPU that's available? Uh, well, not really, maybe. Well, we'll see. At least I just bought the cheapest 6 core, or you could say the cheapest CPU that's actually capable of gaming. And uh, many of you yeah, noted in my video about the $600 gaming PC that this CPU was a terrible choice because the Ryzen 5 5500 was a such a much better deal. Well, relax. And we're going to talk about this today. I bought the CPU about one year ago and it is still relevant because it is still about the most budget CPU or most budget system basic component, I guess, that you can get for getting into gaming. And this is probably going to be true for the next generation that's going to be coming out for the uh, AM5 socket or whatever, because that CPU here is still an AM4, which is an aging platform, but still can be upgraded up to a 5950X, which is quite a capable 16 core. But still talking about the low end right now. I already did a guide on undervolting on this CPU and I have used it for about one year now, so I can give you my long-term feedback on it, how it went for me in the past year. And so if you want to, buy, uh, to build a really cheap setup in the future, maybe with a used one of these, on a $200 budget or whatever, then uh, this video, video might help you with choosing the right CPU. First of all, what is the CPU? Well, it's a six core, it is Zen 2 architecture, so it is not Zen 3, so not really uh, the 5000 series, so be, that's why it is uh, called the 4500. And uh, this is because it is not really a 3600 anymore or like 3000 series because it has some improvements for, from the 5000 series, but it is not Zen 3 yet. So it's kind of in between there. Comparing it to the 5500, which would be Zen 3, so it brings a higher clock speed with it and also higher IPC, so higher gaming performance at the same clock speed but that CPU again in most countries, again, I'm not saying all because in some countries, actually the CPUs are very similar in price, but in most countries, those CPUs are about 30% more expensive. So that's at least one thing why you might consider the cheaper 4500. As well as that, the CPU has six cores and 12 threads and a lower L3 cache amount than, for example, the 5600X or even the 3600X. So the previous generation, but one step up. The 500 ones, or rather the lower end ones of those generations were cut down in the cache department and therefore have also a little bit less gaming performance and also rendering performance. So you're gonna have some disadvantages there. Now for the gaming performance though, how did it fare, how did a 60 dollar or 60 euro CPU fare in games? Because yeah, there are a lot of demanding titles right now out there and um, maybe some of them should struggle with that CPU or the CPU sh should struggle with running on uh, some of those titles. Well, yes, this is true in some instances, like for example, Flight Simulator, which is not capable of running above like much over 30 FPS if the CPU is stuck, because even if you turn down the settings quite a lot, yeah, this game is very CPU intensive, but the point of this system is not to run everything at 60 FPS or more. Um, for Flight Simulator, it just has the requirement that you need a more expensive setup, and that's just it. But other games have had its problems with that CPU as well, I have to admit that. Um, while Beam NG, for example, is a very CPU hungry game, and so is City Skylines 2, for example, if you want to play that, maybe look into upgrading that CPU to a stronger unit, maybe go for a 5600 or a 7600 if you can afford the AM5 platform. Other than that, most of the games and even the ones I've mentioned can be made to run on that CPU pretty well. Um, looking at obviously esports titles like CS2, those will run flawlessly without any issues 
and also Hogwarts Legacy, which can be CPU demanding, runs quite well. So does BeamNG if you choose the right settings. So if you know what you are doing, you can achieve quite a lot of gaming performance with that CPU. And I've done also some 3D rendering or 3D modeling in Fusion 360, which works well on smaller and not so complicated models. And I do video editing. All my videos are edited on the CPU as well. While I only use 1080p and 50 FPS, so yes, it is not as demanding as 4K or even 4K60, for example. It still will be able to handle 4K30 without any problems, especially if you pre-render the footage, which is in DaVinci Resolve, for example, pretty easy and can be done in about, I don't know, like, depending on what footage you have in a few minutes to half an hour if you have a lot of footage that has to be pre-rendered. But as I said, that's not a huge problem and can be done pretty easily with a few clicks. In conclusion, obviously you have to do some sacrificing here. Uh, obviously when you play about 60 bucks for your CPU, you are not going to get much gaming performance above, well, that price level or that budget level. The reason for that maybe you don't want to buy used is that you have a warranty and stuff and uh, yeah, so that's something some people might choose over buying used. And uh, if you buy used, obviously you could go for a 3600 or 5600, which might be the same price or maybe a bit more for the 5600, but might deliver a better gaming performance, especially when you choose the 5600. But again, this is for a new CPU that is very inexpensive. I wouldn't recommend the 4100 though, because that's only a quad core, though with hyperthreading, it is still very slow compared to this one, because that's just really not enough power, I'd say. A short word on overclocking. Yes, I was also able to overclock this CPU, although there's not too much in it. Base clock, it runs around 4.05 gigahertz if you can cool it well. So if you are running the box cooler, it's gonna run at about four gigahertz. And if you use a better cooler, it's gonna run at about 4.05 gigahertz. And overclocking is possible up to like 4.25, maybe 4.3 if you can get lucky. So there's not that much room in it. You will get around maybe five to 8% performance out of it, but that's about it. And you're not gonna get much more than that out of the CPU, um, but the, Power consumption isn't going to increase by a massive amount, only like 10 or 15 watts. So overclocking might be worth having a look here because also it can be quite fun on those CPUs, especially if they're not that inexpensive. They're not too pricey to replace if they go bad. Although that isn't really the case if you are using humane voltages and stuff. So last words, should you buy the CPU? Well, depends on your budget. Obviously, if you want to build a PC for like 500 bucks, this might be the ideal CPU. If you need more gaming performance than what I just showed you, maybe go for the 5500, which will deliver about like 10 to 15% performance or in some titles, maybe even more. But only if you're in the CPU limit, if the GPU is your limiting factor, then a faster CPU is not gonna get you anywhere. And um, yeah, otherwise, let me know what you think about this video or about this CPU in general. And otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.